this uh, place, the door of no return. The door of no return because here, before you reach this place, this place is the last step for you to go to the other world. I mean, when you're a slave, you, when you reach this place, it means that there will no return for you. You have to get the, the ship over there and then you go to America or other countries. But why we say the door of no, uh, the gate of no return, or the door of no return? We say so because there is a tree. That tree, when you go around that tree uh, nine times, when you're a man, you forget everything about your past, your culture, your family, everything about you. But when you are a lady, you have to go around that tree seven times, and you forget about everything. So you are easier to manipulate, you are easier to, uh, they will have you easily. So uh, that's why we say the gate of no return. Because you already go around that tree, you forget everything about you. So when you read this place, there's no return for you. You have to go. Who so planted that tree? Yeah, uh, you know, Benny here, there are so many things that are mysterious. You know, everything about Benny uh, is mysterious sometimes. Uh, but before you do all those things, you have to consult uh, the, uh, the oracle. And then uh, what the oracle directs you, that's what you do. If the oracle tells you uh, this is what you do so that you get, satisfa you get satisfaction, that's what you have to do. So those days, the king of Abome, they have their ways of uh, treating people, making them uh, docile so that they can get them easily. So they are the ones who do those things. The history of slave trade it's always bitter. And this is one of the reasons why I stopped making videos like this. I mean, if, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I was so curious, just getting to know what our brothers and sisters actually went through uh, before they found themselves in another world. I think my last video was at the last bath. Um, I couldn't sleep that night because I felt like the story that I had was, I mean, I was imagining it. And imagining it really haunted me for a very long time. But we cannot run away from stories like this because I see people on the internet saying that the slave history was a fairy tale. But we still got proof and history that traces back for us to know that something like this actually existed on the continent. Are you still doubting that you're from Africa? Are you still doubting that your roots are not back on the motherland? My brother in the diaspora, Africa is calling. I'm not saying pack all your bags and come back here, but all I'm saying is let your feet reconnect with the motherland. And I know and believe that your ancestors will be so proud of you. And this is why I keep on saying that, come back home. I'm not happy the way African governments are commercializing, come back home. Because for me, your coming back home is all about money. But I feel like your coming back home is more like a fulfillment for your soul. I was in Wida one of the biggest market of slave trade. I was just there to learn about the slave history that happened in Benin. But I found a sister busily pouring libation for her ancestors. And I was like, you know what? Since she's reconnecting back to the motherland, let me speak to her. And probably it will inspire you who wants to come back to the motherland. And one thing that I love about the map of Beni is because it looks like a key. And that key is opening the doors back to you all. So brothers and sisters, enjoy this video with my sister right here. And I hope to see you too on the motherland. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to be part of this awesome YouTube channel.
Regina, I saw you pouring libation mm -hmm. at the door of no return. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really want to speak to you for us to have this conversation. My name is Maya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana who is on a journey to change the negative narratives of Africa and also celebrate African excellence. And also let the diasporans know that Africa is home for them. Why are you doing this in the motherland? Well, you say the motherland, so I return to my mother. This is my real mother, yeah. And I return for myself and on behalf of my family, my older ones, on behalf of my sons, on behalf of those that aren't born, so that I can become a good ancestor who can tell the stories and who remembers and understands the history much more than we do not learn this. We don't learn this in England. You see, so I come and I say, I see with my eyes. What do you mean by you don't learn this in we England? Don't learn, we don't learn about um, the history of racism and enslavement and the capitalism, the religion. We don't learn how this is connected in England. At primary school, I am colouring in pictures of castles kings and queens and it I'm like what is this for me what is the connection here and my family because you can see I am a, a lighter yeah. color because my mother is English and Irish and my dad's is from Jamaica Whoa. so I, I spend a lot of time in a white family in rural England where there were hardly any black bodied people. How does that feel? Mm. It was difficult growing up there and not knowing where you come from or being able to connect or understand where you belong, not seeing people who look like you, being more objectified. So, At what point did you decide to go on this journey? I finished training as a psychotherapist and I was doing some more training and it was so racist I, leave, I left in the middle and last year I, I met somebody there from, who's from J Jamaica and she said I am going to Ghana to, to um, run a hotel and I had dreamed to come to come to Benin and Togo three years ago when I read some books about Afa and Mami Wata mm. and I could not imagine I could ever come and be here. But I sow the seeds and now it is blossoming. How does it feel being here? Yeah, yeah it's really fantastic mm. and filled with sorrow and, and pain, frustration. I want the place to be filled. I laid a wreath earlier at the memorial and there is just one wreath there at the moment of flowers. I want the place to be filled with people coming and remembering. I want the paths to be a pilgrimage because we are pilgrims here, always visiting, always remembering, always pouring libations to remember our ancestors. I saw you pouring libation. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important to you to return back to the motherland? And when you return, decide to pour libation. And I saw you moving. I mean, you're not standing at one place. It's more like uh, you're following the footsteps of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. can, can you just explain to me what, what were you doing? Why that process? Mm -hmm. For me, because it's a pri private memory, so this is public memorial. And for me, this is my private prayers. I pour the libation for the spirits and, the, and, and my, the spirits of ancestors, my personal ancestors, but also everybody. Those who died, those who didn't make it, those who will die at, by the water. I pour it to say, I, I am here. You imagined us in your 
dreams. How could you even dream when you were chained? But you survive and you imagine us. Hundreds of years later, we are, we are here. I am here, these are your feet, these are your hands, these are your eyes, these are your ears, this is your mouth, this is your heart, this is your head. Now you live through us. We remember what we see, what I see, what, you, what I do, what I say, I do with you. I come back and I give them all I give them all the memories of all the places in the world I travel because they were young, the young survive. So I give them ev everything they will never see, all their hopes that they wanted for families to study, to make a home. I show them what I do in my heart and I say, this is for you also. I take the koala nuts here because it's closed. I just on the corners, just just for just as some food and then I just have some beans I mean I'm not really priest you know <laughs> so I bring the beans and I just take to the sea and back and I say because it's dry things will never you think these beans will never grow here just like you think you will never grow and prosper but I tell you these beans will grow along the sand also we will learn to take root in the sand in dry difficult places because we are strong. So this is what I do. To give your ancestors a lesson to you right now, definitely they will be so proud of you of what you've done today. Um, has your father ever been to the continent? No, my father, my father grew up in Jamaica and his parents, they came with the wind rush on the big boats that went through South America, through, through the Caribbean, collecting people to work after the Second World War, mm. where the, they call England the motherlands. Come to the motherlands. <laughs> With the Queen, we'll look after you. But of course, they find a very, very hard and difficult life there. Um, so my dad sees himself as Jamaican. Mm. You know? And, and we are Jamaican too, because we go through a process from, we go through a process from door of no return, now is a real initiation. We cross the seas, we take our mind, we take our skills, everything. We cross the seas and we build new civilizations with our skill, with our heart, with our blood, our tears, our sweat. Your father's still alive? Yeah. I sent him a journal every day of what I do. do you, I would like to bring him. No, do, do you think <laughs> your father will ever return to the motherland? I want to take him here. I really want to take him. I, I want you to send this video to your dad. Listen, yeah. I, I want you and I to convince your dad to visit Africa before this year ends. Mm -hmm. You know what we're going to do? Before coming to Africa, what was the impression that or perception that you have for the continent before coming? My, my impression was that this is bountiful. Everything is here. Everything grows here. We have everything here. Why? We must return to where we have plenty, where, where we can grow, like the huge baobabs and the, the trees where we grow and we are spread ourselves out and we have space to be ourselves and grow. If you are defining Africa this way, then mm. why is your dad not want to come in here? Does he have a different perception from yours? He sees the, the, the narratives about the flies, the starvation, the poverty, um, the disease, that it is like a third world country. So you've he is here. worried about his safety. You, you've been here. Worried about his safety? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is see. This is your home, Daddy. This is your home. Benin is safer than <laughs> England. For you, for sure. I mean, there's no, there's no killing in the street of Ghana. Yeah, not for being black, you know, exactly. because my dad beaten badly for being black in the UK. But here, no one is going to beat you for being black. Yeah. <laughs> because you see your own people every single day. Mm. 
Hmm. You know, okay, you've been here. What have you seen so far? That mm -hmm. you think anyone who has never been to the continent, after listening to you, they'll book that flight ticket and come visit the motherland? Mm. It feels difficult because I, I feel like people want to say, oh, you'll have a good holiday and the food is great and the music is great and the people are fantastic. But the, for me as ancestral, you cannot live a good life unless you really understand where you have been and where you're coming from. So for me, it's the most important to come, take the journey. You can never, for me, I, it was difficult because I can never know exactly where we are from. Those tribes, the languages, they're, they're lost. And I have a lot of sorrow that I lose my name, I lose my languages. But I come anyway and I place my feet on the ground. I ask the ancestors, the spirits and the gods for help and let them guide you. Let your ancestors walk you back home first. Give them the choice of finding a true ancestral place. And I tell you, you will find much more peace and abundance in your soul. You will, this is the rest. Always, I, I'm, I'm a psychotherapist and always my clients, they're telling me, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted, I'm so tired. I tell you, this is the place where you walk, where your back is upright, where your heart is blossoming, where your mind is clear, where you have energy and vitality. Come and find your strength, regain your vitality and strength here from your motherland. How many countries did you visit on the motherland? This journey, I come through Ghana and Togo and Benin this time. And your final destination? My final destination, I, I, I return, I go north to Benin because it's important to go north because they take the enslaved from north. So I oh. walk back and I see the homes that they, I see the resistance. I want to see how people live to resist the enslavement, how they were fighting back. Not just, not just the the Hollywood movies about slaves, the enslaved on ships in chains and low. They were fighting, they were strong people fighting for their freedom. So I go, we visit, find a home, North Togo, and then I go back to, to Ghana. I don't know if you've ever heard this before about Africans living in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, in America, saying that we are not Africans. Yeah, yeah, my dad too, really. But, and this is okay because we are people, this initiation, mm. this is a, a life and death initiation to cross this middle passage to who knows where, nobody knew where, this initiation, not every African body made this initiation. So he has the right to say, I am Jamaican, I am from Barbados. You have the right always to say this because it's true as well. Mm. And also we have an African ancestry also. Yeah, we're there. We, we are both. You, listen, I will, I will not say you are both. I will <laughs> say you are an African. Because this is the only place like, listen, you, you're born in Jamaica. But if you trace history, mm. it will bring you back. It will. To this place, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Trace your history. Just. Just trace it. Yeah. And when you trace it, you know, we are here tomorrow. There's going to be a voodoo festival. Mm -hmm. And the voodoo festival, if you go to Haiti, it, the voodoo came from here. Yes. But so people in Haiti are going to say that, oh, no, we're not from Africa. No, that's the root. Yeah. It's important to watch the chamber. If you have Caribbean ancestry, watch the chamber. Because mm. I hear always in England, they're saying, we want reparations, we need compensation. But the chamber is a spiritual way. They have they are acknowledging through the chamber mm -hmm. the participation of African bodies also in slave in the enslavement of other African bodies. So I bring my ancestors to witness this first. Do you think what you've done today will inspire other diasporans to return back to the motherland? Because I mean you came for a private stuff, right? But I'm here, it's no longer private. I've seen it. 
and I've shown them and I know that what you've done today will inspire most of them mm. to return. See, the door over there is the door of no return. And there is another door which says that it's time for you to come back home. And this key holds the door for you to return. So come, the door is open, Africa is calling, trace your route back. And I'm not saying come and stay, but just come in, letting your feet touch the sand in here. I mean, we'll connect you back to your ancestors. Can you? But come in inner, prepare. Prepare first. You know, I, I spend a month fasting, hmm. so I don't take any English or American food. I don't <laughs> want it in me. So I'm drinking water, just eating eggs, tiny bit of salad. You know, prepare, make sure you have your protection and that you are connected with, the, call your spirits in, call the ancestors and the gods in to be your wit and your eyes and your hands so you have a very good journey and a what safe kind of journey. What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> um, whatever your religion, you know, go to the highest place of your religion and also just taking the water to make your libation and just talk to your ancestors, they're your family and tell them what, just talk every day in the, in the morning and in, at night, just pour the water on the ground and just tell them where you're I'm going. I'm going to tell you something, you said put water in Africa. But this is not, Africa, this is no, gin. No, in, Af in Africa the ancestors don't like water. Yeah. Ancestors <laughs> love the pure gin, man. Yeah. you know, so when you come, you know, four to three percent. The ancestors can really drink, you know. So yeah. when you come, you just pour your libation yeah. for the ancestors, you know. Yeah. Uh, your final message to Africans in the diaspora before I let you go. Your ancestors love you. They're here for you. They will walk with you. You will be safe. And you will not be imagining what they can do for you. They are waiting to return, not just to the country empty-handed and take from you. They are waiting to give you, to, to replenish you and to restore you in, in every way. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me and uh, it's a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. And I know we're definitely going to keep in touch. I've returned. Even though I'm not in the diaspora, but I just entered and just returned. It's about time you also accept the fact that your ancestors were from you. I'm not telling you that all of you are from Ghana, but try as much as possible to know your roots. Check the DNA, ancestral DNA, get to know which part of Africa are you from. Whatever you have, when you check and you know that you're from Ghana, Make sure you return to this place and let them know that they said is the way of no return. But when you return, your ancestors will be happy that finally their great great grandson or their great great granddaughter finally returned to them. So, what is the Ghana baby? And uh, I think I'm not going to do more of this episode because anytime I do this episode, I get sad, emotional, and uh, I get back home, I have to struggle to get my home back again. And um, I'm gonna see you in the next one.